Vamos. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome Hola, to noches. Kimbo. Boy, <laughs> don't <laughs> say anything until I see something. You're such a... <laughs> I'm going to start again. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Kimboology, episode cinco, episode five, episode ha. In Thai, ha is actually how you say five, which is funny. So yeah, I don't know why I thought we'll give that a little tidbit. So yeah, episode ha, episode cinco, episode five. <laughs> and that voice you're hearing is my super, super special guest today, Orlando. Hola. Hello, Hola. everybody. Yeah. So yeah, um, right now we also have our visuals going on, so that's why um, we're just kind of like, you know, saying hi guys. Hey, if you guys are watching our visuals, hi. Um, if not, it's okay. Um, yes, yeah. Orlando has a sickening Pornhub hit sweater on. Sickening. Yeah. I love it. And I have the I was read. waiting for this to come in. Yeah, it's so cute. I want one. Like, seriously. I have the Reed yeah. t-shirt on. This is another very popular black co podcast. Com okay. Yeah, the Reed. So, oh, is that Reed. Obama and Michelle? No, nigga. It's I can't the, the host. It's Crit Fury and Crystals. Okay, so I have you, okay, so I have you yeah, on like the little square, so I can't really like zoom in and see what's on there. No, it's it looked cool. like it was Obama, though. <laughs> it's like, like any like, like black man on the shirt, I think it's like, like, a, a, like I an know, influential racist. man. <laughs> it's like an influential racist. man. It's got to be Obama. <laughs> right. Oh, it's a black man. Oh, wait, oh, Obama? <laughs> Obama? I'm like, no, bitch. <laughs> no. So, yeah, this is just, you know, our attire today. Um, yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, yeah, Orlando Thank is going to be our guest today. Soups, soups, soups excited for this episode. I've actually been super excited for this episode since I started doing this, like, many, yeah. like, short weeks ago. So, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm really super excited, excited that you finally did it. We've always told you, like, you're made for stuff like this. And what a better way to, like, kick it off than, like, being at home, relaxing, outside of, like, your 55 jobs that you have. Listen. That you can finally, like, focus on one thing, you know? And like really, mm -hmm. not that you didn't focus on all your other things, that you did them tremendously and like very well, like planned out. You always had everything. You were like here, there, and then I have to go sell bottles here, and then I have to do this. And that. Okay. It's like, and it wasn't Aww, even Orlando. me. Orlando, <laughs> so sweet, thanks, boo. Aww. Yeah, My friends are so supportive. Hard work never goes unnoticed. It never goes unnoticed. You always do such a good job maintaining your friends and like your jobs. I try. There's a lot going on. You know, it's a lot. But I try. Mm -hmm. Thank you, baby. I appreciate that. Yeah, Orlando's been. Um, Orlando's been. Um, friends with me now for i don't even know how many years are we friends how do we meet that's a part of our you know segment too. Like how we meet and that whole jazz how do we meet Fuck, you know like i always forget how i meet anyone to be honest like i have the Literally. worst memory i mean People were your cousin is like, back. hey and is she yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever you guys are like have this love-hate relationship with though becky was uh we just had becky compost on in our last episode where we would discuss okay. i may destroy you and this is orlando and this is their cousins even though they that's that show you guys have been talking about is that what you guys were talking about in the group chat earlier yeah you clearly didn't listen to the episode it was about yeah, i mean yeah, yeah it's because um i didn't really like i haven't gotten into that show yet i've been oh it's um, good oh so you don't want to listen to it yet? yeah no 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 i mean if you, i it's got spoil alerts all over it but it's really good it's really, really okay good. so yeah I, I definitely recommend watching it it's a really good show what's yeah, it on it's on what hbo, HBO netflix okay HBO. i think i have that hbo AT&T members, I think if you have AT&T yes. as a wireless network, you get HBO Go. I yes, believe. yes, yes. That's actually okay. correct. AT&T, cut that check for me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what's the sa coinage. same as Pornhub? <laughs> so make that Orlando is advertising the <laughs> shit out of them right now. Hey, you know what? I make a cut lot the of check. videos and they pay me. They pay me decent. I think. I mean, it's pretty okay money. It's low quality. I make it with my iPhone, so it's really not like. Yes, we I'm wait. Totally we gotta. Kidding. I was I'm like totally Orlando. <laughs> where, what's your OnlyFans? Stop hiding the like link to me. I it's want. Like, it. gay man has a gangbang with seven lesbians. Like, <laughs> that's, a, that's a new. That's a new. That's a new yes. genre of porn. <laughs> yes, I mean, me and Orlando literally always joke about how I want to peg him, and that's like we don't joke. My dream. But it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start the show because we're just going hanging on a tangent. Um, we're going to start the show. Oh, wait, with it was, our it normal... was it not rec okay, yeah, recording? Yeah, it's recording. Oh, okay. No, but we're going to start. Oh, okay. I can't wait. You. You're like, what? Wait, wait, wait am what? I getting paid for this? <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> am I going to get paid? <laughs> you have my cash. No. I think I sent it to you by accident. You're like, what's, wait, what's going so? on? Like, no, this is not your OnlyFans. This is Kimbo Allergies <laughs> podcast, okay? All right. No, we do our weekly segment called Sexy Sustainability. Well, and um, I'm mad at Orlando because what I actually want to talk about is what I seriously, seriously hate, and he has that in his hand, is water bottles. 
Orlando. He's got a plastic water bottle he's drinking out of. No, <laughs> it's, like, bio, um, it's biodegradable, Kim. They just came out with these as of last month. They sell you're them a liar. Uh, and Whole Foods. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No, what I'm going to discuss is actually biodegradable bottles right here. So we have, I just have a couple of um, companies I want to shout out that actually do have biodegradable um, packaging. Um, just Water, so it's just J-U-S-T. And that's actually um, a water bottle company that is owned and run by the Smiths. So like okay. Will Smith, Jada Smith, um, what's the, Jaden and Will and Jada. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they actually have a water, they actually have a water bottle company and it's, I believe that they, there's, their packaging is 80% like recycled or some shit like that. Like, it's great. So like that, that bottle right there, if you do um, patronize them, you are, you know, contributing to helping reduce the water bottle, plastic water bottle, you know, trash everywhere in the world. And then there's That's another, good. it's another one called boxed water. And so you might have seen it at the store. Yeah, those have been around for, for quite some time, though, aren't they? Yes. The box water. It's like mm -hmm. a white, it's like just black lettering on it. Like yep. very like bold font, just black, like black very water. Very simple, <laughs> to the point. A boxed water. Boxed water. Yeah, I mean, I like <laughs> I the said fact black that. Water. <laughs> you said black water? <laughs> Yo, sickening, though. I would drink that. Black water, <laughs> yes cute no i mean it's they're both they're both advertising the whole you know cutting down on the plastics in the world with the, all the plastic bottles that we have from water bottles so um yeah. i do encourage and encourage you guys and hope that you guys will if you do need to buy you know water bottles on the go if you don't have one that you reuse for your, like your you know a canteen or, or like a empty water whatever like this boom yeah um no absolutely I, I feel like i feel like nowadays like everything is like a it's like a journey you know to getting to the right path or like doing making right choices like just with water bottles like you're talking about yeah like I, try. I feel as a person I try to be a little bit more conscious of making better decisions and I wouldn't even say like eating the right foods because I'm still at the place in my life where I'm eating trash you know like it's hard I'm as far I'm, as like you know I'm, like yeah. just doing other things in life you know that are everyday things that you try to do better and like have better options yeah it's it's getting there you know I mean, every little bit counts. So even if it's like one meal a day, you know, maybe not having trash, maybe having some vegetables or, you know, reducing like, I maybe. Think I've been, <laughs> so I've been eating chilies, um, Wendy's chili for like the last two, three weeks. What like, the fuck? I don't know. Oh, Wendy's I'm like, it's chilies? Healthy. Veg <laughs> I'm like, it's healthy. There's, you know, there's, there's green beans in it. There's like, oh, know, there's beef. There's, <laughs> there's green peppers. And it's not healthy. <laughs> Seriously not. Yeah, I love how you're trying to pass it over that it's healthy. Nah. Wendy's chili. Although that shit is good. I used you know, I used to fuck up some Wendy's chili. Fire. Fire. It I is. I always get the large one. Yes. And you put a little cheese in that shit. Oh my God. So bad. So bad, yeah. but so good. I mean, let's um, you know, I'm not I'm not no saint. I fucking still eat me and I'm try I just try to at least have plant based. I know. Meat. Have you seen your booty? I know what you eat. It's biscuits, okay? <laughs> biscuits. I know, right? Thickums, I know. And shit. Yeah. Quarantine has made your girl, you know, extra squishy. So that's why I've been trying to work out a little bit more. You know, we struggle with that. Because the girl's been in the kitchen. The girl's been cooking. I heard, yeah, oh. you were saying you were cooking earlier. I was like, you waited to do this earlier? Because I was just laying in bed. I was like, I'm kind of free. You're like, I'm cooking. I'm like, you were like, mm, I was making green Thai ch uh, curry. Genki wangai or genki wangu, which is like green green curry, Thai green curry with shrimp. So I'm a chef. Didn't you know? Okay. <laughs> You're like, um, bitch. <laughs> didn't. I don't know. You guys <laughs> are going to taste my fried rice on the, this weekend. So oh, that's right. Is, it this, is that this weekend? You know, I'm, yes. I'm the worst oh. planner. You got to talk to my, you got to talk to my assistant, mom, Jells. She's my assistant. <laughs> she always like has all my bookings. Aside of her crazy, <laughs> hectic corporate life, she's always like, I know. That bitch telling me where to go, what times and stuff. That, I just forget. I just don't. Not that I don't care. I just don't care to make a plan. <laughs> we literally have to remind or in our group chat, be like, oh, hello. Like, just come on, get on top of it. Literally, we were supposed to record this yeah. yesterday, but you went into a K-hole and yeah. didn't come out of it for a whole ass extra day. So whatever. I was making whatever. money. <laughs> <laughs> He's referring to his Pornhub sweater. If you guys can't see him. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, that was just, honestly it was the first one that I picked out. I pulled out of the drawer. It's sweater weather, so it's like I'm I live. What better, what better way to start than with something that defines who I am? Porn is live. massive to me. So right, I live. I want one. I seriously want one. I want to like who do whose dick I gotta suck to get a Pornhub sweater? Okay. Um, oh, I would cute. Know. <laughs> cute. I know. I'm like I don't even want to ask Orlando who he fucking because the list. <laughs> Ooh, anyway. 
Oh, come on. <laughs> my cat is now trying to get my attention. Hey, go away. George, Anyways. is he going to, I'm going to meet him. I'm excited. Yeah, I don't really like cats, him. but he's super, he's super he's cute. So he's really cute. cute. This is Georgie. Say hi. Yeah, okay. Nope. Really okay. Seems, he just kicked. Yeah, okay. He just Never like mind. knocked the microphone. <laughs> I was like, he seems like he's a chill cat. And it was like, bam. <laughs> You'll like him though. He's a little shit, but he's like, he's cool. He's good people. Anyways. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, that was our sexy sustainability. S- s- sexy. S- I can't even talk today. Sustainability. Thank you. Sexy sustainability <laughs> segment. So let's just move it right on along. Cause I do want to talk. Uh, we got a lot to discuss, especially the main attraction, which I want to discuss later. So excited. Um, so yeah. Did, so let's move on to recycle. So we're going to recycle the news, uh, which is our hot topics uh, section. Did you hear about Cardi B and the divorce she's filing for? Yeah, I saw that, like, first thing I opened up on Instagram was, like, that. And everybody was, like, bitching. Some people were for it. Um, I don't really know how I feel. You you know, guys, I don't really, I don't get very so starstruck like that. I don't even follow any celebrities on my social media. Like that's because that. you are a celebrity. It's just not my thing, you know. It's just like <laughs> I'm like they're just regular people who have like. Well, true. I feel I like absolutely I feel agree. like it's like these types of things. Like like you said, it's recycled, right? Like it's like it's mm-hmm. happened with some other celebrity like a month ago or like someone else, and it's like the same story plot, cheating, the infidelity, and it's just like it doesn't it doesn't intrigue me anymore, you know. Um, Boring. Oh, you're supposed to be all about this life when we talk about. I mean, this. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm. If I, <laughs> I'm if just I had kidding. to choose, if I had to choose whether to be upset or happy about it, I'm going to say I'm happy for it. You know, because... well, if you guys, if you didn't know in the past, like, you know, remember how he got he, Offset got caught up with like him cheating on her before. So this is all based off of LoveBScott.com's post. He posted Cardi B files for divorce from husband Offset. And a while ago, I forgot what time the timeline was, is he was caught cheating on her before. And she was like, she broke up with him. And then he like went during her concert, he went on stage and like, like professed his love and was like, take me back, like in front of her audience on the i know it was a thing because she was performing (laughs) at work the bitch was at work she clocked in and this nigga (laughs) comes to her job and was like i love you take me back and of course the audience is all like cardi take him back like you know it's like but then like you know because they have a child they have um what's her name culture culture together yeah they have culture la cultura la cultura they had a what was that la cultura like oh yes sexy okay i love it no, but they had a sickening party for her culture. Like, did you see that? They had, like, fucking, like, all sorts of fucking okay. niggas in the house. And it was, like, I don't know. Anyways, it, they just had this, like... <laughs> so it's, it's, so it's kind of like, like, like a Mexican party for, like, a three-year-old. Where it's, like, Seriously. A bunch of, like, well, she's and, Dominican. Like, nah, like, <laughs> she's Dominican, oh, so she's a so party girl. it was girl. very much that. It was very, very much, much It was, like, this big-ass, like, liquor bars for a three-year-old party. <laughs> Crab legs, all sorts of shit there. I was like, <laughs> really? This child is a baby. Doesn't need to eat crab legs, but whatever. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I, I saw it. I just, to me, it would be like, I'm for it only because I still think she's very much early on in her career, you know, like she just, you know, Bodak Yellow that put her on the map. Um, was that like about two years ago, maybe? Was it yeah, about? Yeah, it wasn't very so, you know, she's very, ago. she's very recent, you know, and like, yeah, she's again, if I, if I had to choose to like be for it or against her divorce, I would say it's, I'm for it because again, given um, Offset's background and like what he's done already, like I'm very much... Keep show me who you are the first time and then like you know you do it the second time around and that's really fucking stupid and it's like it shows you something about a person that they just didn't value or appreciate their second chance right. and as a woman a woman rapper at that like she should focus more on like making her career blow up even more because she's just started you know she's very yes. early on into the game she's gonna do great yeah. and what better way than to get out and not have what's the word you an entanglement with, with ah, somebody yes, like, like entanglement. Oh, an yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with her water bottles yes. and, <laughs> and the I can't with you. Like, you know, like what better way to like start off and like kick off her career even more without having to like worry about some fucking douchebag doing some stupid shit or yeah. honestly like even like having to like, give her half of her like, her goddamn money like because that's I what know. it's gonna come down to. Like so let her work even hard and make some more coinage and keep it for herself and the baby. Amen. Amen. I mean, yeah, I think at this point, Cardi B is way more popular than Offset anyways, and she's probably making way more money than him now. So she feels like, shit, fuck you, nigga. Like, if you don't want to be faithful to me, and it's like, and Cardi B looks like she's down for whatever. You know what I'm saying? I was like, like, she would have probably been like, okay, you know what? Fuck it. 
Like, like if he brought a girl home with them, she'd probably be like, I'm down. Like, what's up? She would have so like, about it. <laughs> she did, Yeah. So it's like, why are you fucking out here? Like, out here? Like, she's telling you probably like, okay, well, if you want some new pussy, like, just bring it home. I, right. I got you. Like, we'll both. Should, like, let me have her first. Right? <laughs> okay. So right, I don't know. Just, but then again, I don't know. This is this was just, you know, posted on lovebscott.com. And I don't know exactly what. The, how, how credible is know. her website? I've always heard about her, but I've heard she was still something Love like, a, Scott, like a gossip column. Love B. Scott is a man. Well, actually, Love B. Scott identifies as non-binary. So okay. that's what he, that's what they just um, identify as. Um, and it's literally Love, uh, Love B. Scott. B. Scott has, was one of the first, like he's, he's like OG, like they're an OG. Like they've been in the game, like one of the first bloggers. So, so they, they created it. Okay. Extreme, extreme. I like when it comes to like, when I get my sources, I go to lovebscott.com and I go to like TMZ. Like those are the ones that I like check out first. Okay. Like all, yeah. And, and like, they are like really like all the housewives bullshit. Like they get all the tea right away. Like I'm so have, late. I always go to like the, the shade room or something. The shade room is great too. <laughs> the shade room is great too. Like I actually go to the shade room a lot too for stuff, but Love B. Scott is actually, lovebscott.com is like the OG. So like I'll give Love B. Scott their credit because they created this world that we live in. Like the whole like blogging and tea and gossip was a creator, was the first. Of the black community and the black and trans, whatever, you know, that community. Like yeah. first, yeah. Like way before like Perez Hilton and all that shit. So just oh, a little yeah, tidbit for you guys. Guy. Yeah. Okay. Becky stands for Perez. I don't, whatever. <laughs> she wants Still to be me. him. They yeah. kind of look alike, though. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, Orlando loves his cousin, guys. He doesn't hate her. Like he seems, I don't know. But anyway. I really love him. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know she's going to be listening to this and she's going to be fucking, like, cracking up. So, yeah, that was all kind of wanted to just chat about for the recycle part of this segment because I really want to get to the excitement part. But anyways, um, let's yeah. just move it along because – um. I just want to briefly, uh, oh yeah. And then also I, the reason why I love you so much, Orlando is because literally I love that you stand for like shows like Martin and like girlfriends, <laughs> like you are a yeah. black woman in real life. Like, it's so funny <laughs> to me. Like I was the other day watching was, girlfriends now. <laughs> I lo- I have been having it on repeat. Like it's just been going this eight <laughs> seasons. So I just yeah. started from the beginning and just let it play. Isn't it so good? It is really good. It's fucking delicious. It's, it's just, you know what it reminds me of? Like, it reminds me of the show Friends as well. It's like, it's like raw humor where it's like, you really, I love it. It's so I funny. Stand. I it's thought like it was white very corny personable. humor. I can't do it. It was, it is. Well, granted, there was hardly any black people on it or brown. No, there was know, like whatever. one. <laughs> right, no, there was like half of one. <laughs> they were like mixed. <laughs> they were like yes, white that's right. Because what's her name? I forgot the name of the girl, but she's like biracial, like me. Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, but no, what I'm seeing is like the humor in it. It's just like the reality. Like it was just like relatable everyday things that can happen instead of like the scripted corny shit that you see nowadays. Like, oh. granted, they're all corny. Even like girlfriends can be a little corny, but it's still fucking. It's majority is funnier than corny. So, so I loved it. Yeah, and just showing like her, her big like I know her, her big, big bug eyes. eyes. <laughs> She's just like Tracy Ellis Ross is everything. She's hilarious. You're Tony yeah. Boots though. Like you are Tony. <laughs> no, for sure. Like to, like Orlando is a like money grubbing like. I have I have high standard values, but I have a good heart deep down. I Tell I would me make, why I'll, this I'll make I'll make I'll make the right decision. I'll make the right decision about. Six out of ten times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I was super jealous when this motherfucker goes on his, like, vacation with his boo thing in the past, and he goes to where I want to have my honeymoon in the future, the Maldives, yeah. or Maldives, or wherever oh, you want to it. And I was the like, Maldives. he, like, fucking flew first class. I'm like, fuck you, O, first of all. Yeah. So mad at oh, you. Oh, God. It was good times. Good times. Young. Young and fucking crazy. Remember Matt? I this- do. It's great. I'm just. I still have the bag he gave me on some <laughs> random shit. <laughs> I still look over my shoulder, Matt. I mean, you're watching this. Please don't kill me. I'm sorry. I was. I young. still have him blocked for you. I'm sorry. I said no. When he proposed yeah. to me, it was like crazy. I was just like, shit. Like I don't know. What if happened? I, I was like, I'm 23. Like I can't be married. Oh When we went yeah. to the Maldives, that's somebody proposed. Like you know. Like, Wait, he actually proposed to her. You didn't yeah, tell me that. He brought oh, it up. Yeah. 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 And I was Did like, you have a ring? Shit, you know, like I can't. Yeah. 
And I was like, fuck, oh like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, I'm 23 years old. I wasn't even out to my family yet. He hadn't really met them yet. Like oh, that. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he it's... did take you to the destination place of engagement <laughs> and honeymoon. So it makes sense that he would fucking, you yeah. know, propose. I mean, it was it. fucking great. I feel like sometimes I wish I would have been a little older and experienced a vacation like that. Because I was just, I mean, I was, oh. I was there young. And I swear I couldn't stop taking fucking selfies and pictures of him and I or like the beach and shit. Where I should have just like disconnected and like not yes. done shit. You know, like all my other some of my other vacations where I just do my thing and just be in the moment. Um, yeah. But okay. It you know, it's an experience, around. you know, it's yeah, okay. no, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. I mean, you got to say you fucking went there. I'm so jealous. I would love to go there, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I agree though. Like when I go there, I want to fucking just enjoy. Cause it's a fucking gorgeous, like fucking place. It's like this tiny mm-hmm. little Island off of like the Emirates or some shit or like something. Yeah, it's uh, and just in the, in, it's in the Indian ocean. It's okay. like a 19 hour flight to get there but honestly yep. that flight felt like it was fucking like four and a half hours it was just really luxury you had our own cocoons and shit i busted oh. like seven bottles of like i think like some were like bella carte like rosé and then there was like two bottles of crystal i was just fucking drunk as fuck on the flight Orlando. and i just passed Where out he's a kardashian fuck out of here <laughs> i'm i'm rob <laughs> <laughs> I don't, the one that do that to yourself. Make, no, you're not gonna, Rob. The one, was, the one that was gonna make it but never did. <laughs> Yo, rest in peace to Rob. He like fell off the face of the earth, like, and he was fine. So, whatever. I heard you and Becky say that the other day. They're, I he's thought he was not fine. fine. He was I, jacked boots. <laughs> I I was a stan like back in the day when he was like all fitted and young and cute. I was like, I don't know. That was back when I, you know. He was so corny. Didn't he want to like come out with socks and shit? I was like, what are you doing? Because he doesn't got to work. Like his fucking rich ass mom. Like, so kick he's back the devil. and enjoy the wealth. Like, I mean, true. Like, that's what, that's like, come on. He's like, mom, what, what's the least amount of work that I can do and still say that I'm doing something? I don't know. Come out with the sock line. Okay, cool. Do that. Like, <laughs> like what? I wouldn't be like, surprised if fucking Chris Gender was probably like, you know what? We need to, to get like extremely morbidly obese and like go <laughs> through this miserable phase. Let's capitalize on you. Seriously. And then everybody was like, no, for sure. Like, like be the spokesperson for like Popeyes or some shit. It's just be like eating chicken <laughs> and just like live it up. Like yeah. life, life upon life. I don't care. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the rich and we're, I'm jealous clearly. So I keep talking about them. But anyways, <laughs> let's move on. I'm so excited. But before we do that, let's take a little break and we'll be right back okay no that's fine ricky's gonna just stop it there and then we're oh, gonna just stop it there no nope, okay, no cool. and then we're just gonna go right back into right now okay. and we are back we're back with orlando and we're about to get to the main event oh shit you know what i realized i forgot to push the spot so is it like an intro song like dun, 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 dun. maybe the, produ- <laughs> the producer the producer probably works something in there he tends no i forgot okay. to like usually i have time like how long this how long okay. these are th- that way we don't be going on it for like hours and hours and hours and i totally forgot to push the yeah. start button so producer okay did you know exactly kind of what, what time we started Okay, whatever. It's it's eight o'clock now. It's fine. We'll we'll figure it out. Anyways, okay. we gotta get to the good stuff, which is ballroom culture. Ballroom, ballroom, hey, ballroom, ballroom. Something hey. the world is going crazy about lately. I'm so I love excited. It. For it. I love yeah. ballroom culture so much. You know that me and you always connected from that. Yeah, for you sure. Remember, that. I took you to your first ball. You took me to my first ball, which wasn't I, even, which wasn't a good ball. I was disappointed, and I wanted you to like really get the feel for it. But we're gonna see that I'm later. Down, like I still to this day, like I I appreciate ballroom culture so much. It's been the birthplace of so many things that we like culture, everything, dance, like so much stuff was birthed in ballroom, and like doesn't give it yeah. credit where it's due. from the beginning. It's since the beginning of time, you know, it's right. something that's always been incorporated in people's videos, whether it's fashion or mm-hmm. sometimes even wordy. I feel like I've heard the word gag or like fall in and like lyrics and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, oh they must've, they must've like hung around somebody within ballroom culture that they you know, know they picked that up because that doesn't just like come up. Like you don't just make that up. You, and you even cisgender, cisgender men are saying it too, like read yeah. and shade and things like that, which are, yeah. which is from ballroom. I like, say, I think Becky's brother, my cousin Stevie, I remember her, she told yeah. me years ago. And this is when I was just like 
maybe like about a year or two into ballroom and you know I, I picked up the lingo and I would talk to Becky in that manner and she said it in front of him one time he's like I like that that, that sounds cool like he's like I get like a he's like I get like a representation of what we're talking about that like I said yeah the gags. He, like he likes the, the reference gag and like a and like a conversation or something does so, he know like what it means like where it's from and what it means yeah yeah, yeah. he knows where it's from and he thought it was very okay. interesting and he's like yeah he's like I like he's like I would use that word he's like it sounds funny and it sounds cool and it gives you like a direct like imaginary like you picture something and it just it's it just reads a story one word will give you a story on like what you're talking about you know it's that it's okay, that theatric and it's that like creative Shout out to you yeah Dude, i think that's so but cute. then yeah. but then you also have like some people that we talk about and they're like what are you guys fucking talking about like, mm-hmm. you guys had a whole conversation they're like I'm lost like elaine elaine's always lost like, oh, I don't know elaine is forever <laughs> like what is that what? what she's like i only know medical terms because i'm a <laughs> well she is saving wives because she's a nurse so yeah oh 100 yeah. no i mean like ballroom culture is so de- near and dear to my heart first of all like you know i've always since i was younger i've always like had a really close gay male friend near me so it's always yeah. been like a part of the lingo but also just because i respect the culture so much i know like it birthed a lot of is birthed a word i don't even fucking know birthed is it birthed i said birthed english english uh i'm like it birthed, birthed, it birthed, it, birthed it, it was basically the birthplace of so many things that we do still to this day, or like, like you said, in the culture, like Madonna's voguing, like all that shit, ballroom, you know, yeah. which we don't, which we don't, which we don't like to claim. Oh, uh, what Madonna? We don't, we don't, yeah, we don't like we to don't know her. That little, that little, I little love tidbit, Madonna. Tidbit you did live. you I mean, see her live or some shit? And I was pressed. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, but I mean, Mark just got his tickets for it and stuff. We went to go see it. It was a good time, you know, like it was fun. I'm just like saying, like, the whole, like, the Vogue part of her life, you know, the yeah, you know, yeah, one yeah. of the songs that put her on the map. She didn't, yes. you know, she never gave credibility to like any of the dancers or like the people right. that taught her all that stuff. A hundred One of um, my really good friends, actually, Javier, um, Javier Ninja um yes. was was he was touring with her a lot you know like he toured with her all the time and he was in all that like a, um dynamic and all that environment around with them and stuff so she's, she she's never, massive in ballroom culture and she never gave anybody any credit for it you know see that's not fucking cool like yeah I, it's like I it's just not can't with that especially like i've seen like the people that are you know higher up like they need to like i've seen like katie perry like rip and like you know appropriate shit from like the culture and not give credit where it's due like i know Giannis marshall he's a, a really talented choreographic heels dancer she's stolen yeah. his choreography as well and you know it's just like fucked up you know but um when it comes to business, ballroom right? i mean you know this right it's the, the business that's how it's it goes. the business like, it's like for you, sure. either, you make it work whenever it's in front of you and you just fucking make it work and no matter where you got it from or came from you use it to your advantage i'm assuming right yeah, 100%. Well, for people that don't know about this world, right? So ballroom culture, let's break it down a little bit about what it is exactly. Because the reason why you're on Orlando is because you actually were in ballroom. Um, I wanted to ask mm-hmm. you about your experience being in ballroom, yeah. like being like being in a house, you know, like, w- like, I just wanted to know more about that. But can you explain to people what exactly is ballroom? Okay. So, I mean, ballroom is pretty self-explanatory. It's ballroom, like, it stems from, like, ballroom competitions. That's kind of where it comes from, where you go to places. doesn't have to be a time, place, stamp, like, per se. Sometimes it'll just be, like, random in the middle of, like, the night or the day or something. Um, But ballroom pretty much is, it's like street gangs, but, like, with different names. And it's not necessarily violent or anything like that. It's more so, like, competitions consists of like a mother and a father and then the children and then there's categories so it can be a lot of things you can be a person that walks more than one category or Uh you can stick to one and you focus on on that craft and just master it or you could just play around with anything or you could be a fashion kid and stuff like that but pretty much what it is to me it was you know like I never had the experience fortunately in my life to like come out and be shunned from my family or Mm. really feel any type of negative pressure for that matter. You know, thankfully I had a lot of really good friends and family and cousins and high school peers. I was never really bullied into anything. You know, people always kind of knew they would pick here and there, but nothing like severe where I was just like tormented or anything like that. You're blessed. Unfortunately. Yeah, no, absolutely. And unfortunately a lot of these kids, you know, are of African-American descent or, you know, like come from Brown families and, you know, a lot of like, communities with a lot of poverty and stuff like where it's gang violence and drug selling and just like negative energies you know um Mm -hmm. so 
I, yeah. went into, I came into ballroom culture in 2007 when I became a ninja, which is a pretty- I was just going to say, what house were you? I was going to say, my, was yeah. what was your house? My first house was Ninja. House of was, Ninja! Yes! Yeah. It was in 2007. And the reason why I got into it was because Eddie, you know, if you've met Eddie before, oh, he runs in I our circle. Eddie. You know I know Yeah. Um, so- Shout out to Eddie. He, he was a, a Eddie. <laughs> um, he, I don't remember exactly how it is that he got in contact with the organizers and the house parents in New York City because the house originated in New York. Okay. Yeah. So I was going to say the House of Ninja. Um, it was started in 1982 and was why Willie Ninja, right? Willie, Willie Ninja. Ninja yeah. Birth, yeah. And that was all the way in 1982 when it started the house, right? Mm -hmm. Willie Ninja started. Yeah. It. So he'd been around for like a long time. You know, he's in documentaries like Paris is Burning, which they show say, all over universities and stuff yeah. like that. And you, I always try to tell people like watch the documentary. It's a little, it could be a little confusing to the naked eye when you don't, again, you don't know the terminologies or like how ballroom functions, but you can kind of get an idea of like what it is and how competitive and like how cutthroat it is, you know? Paris so, Burning is an amazing documentary, everyone. If you haven't mm -hmm. watched it, if you are curious about the ballroom culture, please, please do. It is like, it is showing like the start of ballroom and like who yeah. originated it. The, the, and then it started with the originally in the black and the trans and the Latina community, um, mm -hmm. Lat Latin community. Um, that's because they just didn't have a place where they felt wanted or, you know, they felt like they needed a place to express themselves. Right. So they started these yeah. ballrooms, started ball balls, having balls and, yeah, it started in New York City, like you said, and like that's where Orlando has been. So he was in the House of Ninja, which I love the House of Ninja. And like you said, yeah. so there's Paris is Burning, which is that documentary that kind of shows the true life behind it. But then there's also recently been a um, show and a competition that was out, which we're going to talk about, which I'm so excited about, which is called Legendary. And that is a competition show with ballroom and, and there's a ball and literally there's like money involved. There's different houses that they compete against and it's on hbo max and it's amazing but um yeah so that's basically kind of like the gist of that but with orlando i wanted to know like how long were you doing ballroom for and like what was your category like what were you known for in like the house of right Ninja? okay so again i started in 2007 when eddie introduced me to ballroom culture like of it because i had see, i'd heard him talking about it and he got in contact with new york city and again this new york city they wanted to like kind of spread you know, expand the house, referring, ref, referencing back to Paris is Burning when Willie was alive. He said he wanted to expand his house all over the country and then ultimately end up in like Milan and China and like oh, um, Japan and like do all that, you know, which he, he did. Like to this day, people know who he is and his house is in all those parts of the world because of him, you know. Mm -hmm. And so Eddie got me in because the house parents saw, I guess, I think they saw like one of my pictures on his profile. This was like, again, like MySpace day. So they were like oh going God. to his profile because they're like, they're seeing who Eddie was about and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And then he was like, hey, I have a friend, you know? And they're like, yeah, actually, you know, he would be good. Like, we want him to walk this category. And Which category? My category at the time was Thug Realness. And yeah. again, keep in mind, this was like back in my fucking like young days, you know? I was like in high school, like sophomore year in high school or something. So I wasn't completely out. So I was very much like fucking like, boo. Mass around looking boots. like beer yeah had like yeah yes. I, was, I looked scary as fuck <laughs> and um you know they were like he'd be good for that category we don't really have a lot of realness kids you know because they're a performance house they have a lot of like bogey ah, and new way so they okay. wanted to expand like the roster of like their um category so they were like you know and then he's in chicago so let's start a new chapter in chicago okay. so the people that started the the first ninjas in chicago were eddie and myself and um really yeah and so jason cool. went by leah that. at the time yeah so okay. we're the first ones in chicago were you we were the, the house first. father was, who was the father Eddie was a house father and Jason oh, okay. was a house mother. Yeah. Okay, Eddie was the father of the house oh, at the exciting. time. I need to have Eddie on. Yeah, for sure. Really yeah. He, yeah. He's yeah. very well versed in ballroom culture as well. So he'd be a really good candidate for this as well Love to it. explain it furthermore. Because again, I, I left it after a while and he stood in it for a little bit, a little bit too. Okay. And his, you know, his career started hitting off and all that stuff. So yeah. he had to like, you know, kind of fall back. But um, yeah, so we're the first, we're the first latin house in chicago because again ballroom culture is pretty much like you know it's, it's a black community and mm -hmm. it, it's it was predominantly you know? right in, in chicago mm -hmm. wouldn't you say like the the black community really in it the, still the ballroom is. is it still is black. yeah okay in chicago yeah, for right? sure. the only the only latin house still is ninja in chicago it's still okay. the only latin house here you know That's and okay. so i became you know we became ninjas and we would go to balls and it was so crazy 
because we walk in people are just like who the fuck are these people you know and before we would go to balls they so they the ballroom culture kind of got in cahoots with like this nightclub at the time mambos do you remember mambos oh my god mambo yeah I remember. <laughs> yeah so oh! they would have like they would have like you know like down low like gay nights there on thursday so people would go there and like you know be themselves and be gay so they brought yeah. ballroom culture into it to explain it yeah. so we were there and then they were just picking people out of the out of the um out of the crowd to kind of like show you how what the feel is of being in ballroom so they were like yeah we know you guys don't know how to do it but we're going to use you guys we're going to walk you through it so you can kind of get the feel of a ball what goes on at a ball so there i was you know they're like the category stuck so they picked me to come out so there i was i was this brand new fresh face and they were just wow. like holy shit you know like again i was like a thug you know everybody was like oh my god oh my god it's fucking fine oh. and i was like okay whatever so i'm there and i'm like knocking off like so you, I mean, you've seen how a ballroom works. Like they yeah. have a line of people competing for that category and then you either get chopped or you keep going. So there was like a line of guys and it was just like me, this Latin guy. And then like each one I'm competing with, each one like they pick, they pick me and they pick me. And it's like my first time doing this. I'm just standing there like being myself. Yeah. So okay. then, well, was it only the category that you, that so was, it was, the it, was the, it was the only category that was going on right now. Was okay. Doing this. So I'm here okay. standing, okay. Like, there's like about six or seven, maybe 10 like other thugs like in line against ah. me. So each one I'm knocking them off. Each one I'm knocking them out, knocking them out not gonna mind. Yeah. and then i get to like the last one and you know we're head at head at, head to head and then like they ended up picking them. i feel like i did something so stupid like i think i went up to the judge and i like, smiled and i was like i broke character oh, because you're supposed yeah, to be a you thug can't. yeah so my fruity ass was like <laughs> <laughs> and they're like block that one so that's when i lost him. it yeah, yeah. but okay. then that's kind of like that's kind of what kind of like hit it off a little bit um like people like they, they saw me at the ball before so then when we went to a ball the next time as a house, you know, they knew who we were, like they knew that we were the ninjas. We weren't respected like that. We were still, I mean, we weren't disrespected. We just weren't given life. You know, they were like, you don't, you know, oh, yeah. the ballroom yourself, is very, right? the ballroom, ballroom is very much like know your place, earn your spot type right, of vibe. Right. So this day, like it's always been that and it's always going to be that. And we're the new house. So it's we weren't so like nervous, given like life. You know, you know, it's my dream to like be in a house. Yeah. And, like, do well. Yeah, I wanna, no, like, for sure. I, I, I walked us up there. We, we snatched a body trophy. Like, you have I want to be in body or sex siren so yeah. bad. I feel like I yeah, would yeah. fucking like tens across the board. Yeah. Okay. Listen. Yeah. Automatic, now, automatically status. Like, <laughs> you'd get I your status live. pretty quick for that category. Yeah. Live. Um, did you ever do any other category though? Or was it only Thug Realist? I thought yeah. You so other I started ones. doing, yeah. So I yeah. started doing, so that's what I started, right? And okay. then um, after a while, like maybe like about a year or two later, I started getting a little bit more comfortable. So I was like, man, I really want to fucking Vogue. So yes. I came out, I came out as a twister at, one of our house parents balls and uh, I remember walking up yeah twister so it's realness with a twist so realness would be my okay. my thug category that I walked that I look like a straight you're a gay man but appears to be straight so that's okay. the realness part okay. and then the twist the twist would be that you vogue so it's like you look like this thug but then you start to fucking like Sickening. maneuver and yes. like all okay. that shit right so that's okay. what that was. So when I first came there's out, there's so many categories. Jesus. Yeah, no, there's like there's, a there's so time, many. You know? There's there's so many categories. So when I came out, I remember the first part of the category was you you have to prove your realness. You have to prove that you don't look gay. So that's that. So when I came out for it, they automat they everybody was. Kind of, I remember the judges panel and the guy on the mic was like, he's walk <laughs> he's like he's walking he's walking the twist category because I would always, again two years have yeah. gone by and I've only. I've only ever walked realness, like thug realness. Like I've never done anything else besides just stand and look straight, right? Yeah. So now Orlando looks very straight. If you don't know Orlando, guys, like, and if you just like follow him on Instagram, you'd be like, oh my god, he's like a hot guy. He's like, but he's so he's straight. Like, there's no way. And then you like talk to him, and you're like, oh, never mind. Because <laughs> that's how when I first met you. Oh, I swear to God, like, I think that's literally how it went. Like, I first met you, and I didn't really know you. I don't know how I met you. It was like. I don't know. We like had an outing. We all just started hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, you yeah. know, you, like we're all besties, you know? And so basically yeah. like I saw you and I was just like, he's cute. And I would have like dreams. I would have like hot, like, <laughs> like, what do you call it? Like steamy, like wet dreams about O. And I would wake up like oh fantasies, God. Kim, fantasies. Have, like, wet dreams <laughs> about O. And then when you like, yeah. leave, you're like, oh, Orlando's like gay as fuck. So whatever. Yeah. That's my mom's <laughs> show. I was like, yeah, I mean, like, you don't, you know, you don't look like you're gay, but then like you start to talk and I'm like, <laughs> Mom, what? Like, mom shade. Hello, it's hello offensive. Yeah. I know. <laughs> She's like, but you don't look, really you just like sound it. I'm like, okay. Well, so yeah, well, that's why pretty much Orlando like swept through and won every thug realness, thug realness category because yeah. Orlando does look really straight in real life. Yeah, but and not and not even that, honestly, like to get like to get deeper into it. I never really won any 
any balls. Like I didn't win the actual category. Oh, really? Because, yeah, you didn't no, win that? I didn't. Mm -mm. I would. I mean, I would qualify to get my tens, and I'd make make it through battles, but I would never okay. actually win a trophy because, again, this is very political and it's very earn your place, know your spot. Right. You so did for a long that. time, I had yeah. to like you know really. I would have to like. Sometimes I would like walk, and I would have like my effect together more than you know because you have to like to walk a ball to walk a category. It calls for certain things like bring it in like a red sweater or bring it in like wear a ribbon somewhere. So I would bring the effect always like spot on. And the other people sometimes wouldn't, they would half ass it, but they would still win only because they were already like a, like a house oh. that was like very well known and the status okay. of it all. And they were like, you're this new fucking Latin kid. Like, no, fuck that. Like, give it to See, the That's not one. fair. So, yeah, it isn't right. But I mean, you, you work, you work your way up. I got a little lazy yeah. and I was just like, you know what? It's not for me, you know? So I don't want to do it anymore. So I kind of fell back. And that's when after like, I think it was like maybe a few months into it. And when I took a break from it, being a ninja, yeah. um mario from the house of balenciaga like you know like he had already seen me out at balls and he heard that i was like not a member anymore he's like i heard you're a double you're a free agent now so he's like hey how about you like come to the house you know like you know come to a meeting you know they don't think about it and then like toya ebony came up to me too like hey i heard you're free like come to the house like so everybody really? wanted this, like, latin. everybody wanted like the latin guy like the have a latin dude in their house because again it's all black here so they want to kind of right. mix it up and like i was the only latin guy here at the time like walking balls so they were like you know, well, come, like, come to the category. But then I would, you know, when I became an Aga, a Valenciaga, like, yeah, they would love it. Like, I would go to, like, little mini functions or we'd go out of town to Atlanta or, or walk in Philly or something. And they'd be like, oh, wow, that's, that's new Valenciaga, like the light-skinned kid, the Latin that's one. Cute. But then when it was time for, like, the actual ball, like, and getting judged, and then it'd be like, okay, forget about his life. Like, let's give it to the other one because, like, he's nobody yet. So it's very that. It's very political and it's very, like, you just have to keep at it until you fucking get it. Until you earn your respect, right? Until yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's I did so that. My houses, were, such a... my houses were only um, House of Ninja, which was very great. They were very great to me. The parent, the house parents were really good. I never got to meet Willie. He had passed away the year before yeah. we became ninjas. So Rest I never got to meet him, but they were mm -hmm. really, you guys would have loved him. Like, he was an influential person and he was really good. And Richard at the time was the house mother and he was really great. He would always, I would always look for him for advice and stuff like that. And you know same thing with mario in the house of balenciaga he's like he's a very well respected professor at the university i want to say like a business made a business um professor or something like that he's a very responsible like very well respected man you know well in chicago in here house. in chicago mm -hmm. mm. yeah 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 so dope yeah i love it i'm like it's so good because like i didn't really under i didn't really know your full history when it comes to like ballroom i knew some of it so i yeah. was like i didn't know you were in you know balenciaga too so that's really exciting yeah. and then you went and you actually um, yeah, so I went with them. Traveled, I, I walked, yeah, with you them. traveled to different um, states to do ball because I was always curious, like how that worked. Because you know, like you said, like Willie Ninja was the first one, and then was in New York City. But then uh, there's other houses that are created outside, like mm -hmm. you know, different states, different countries, even. And I was always curious, yeah. like, how did they go? How did like how does one start a house? And like how does one? You know what I'm saying? Like how does one just like? Because the thing is like in Legendary, right? Which we're gonna discuss in a little bit. There's like the house of house of West, which is like a different. It's like they started their own house, you know. And it's yeah. like how I always was curious, like how, how does one? Yeah, and how does one like like you said, like you have to really earn your respect. Like it's not something that they just accept right away. Like you have to really mm -hmm. just kind of go in it. But it takes a while. Like how long? so how many what was your time span like how long did you do ballroom before you kind of like stopped um so 2007 2007 until like maybe like 2000 yeah, like maybe 13 2013 about maybe wow. 2012 2013 so that's a good amount of time it was a, yeah it was a pretty yeah. good decent amount of chunk you know of time yeah. but again remember that i was like a ninja first for like a two to three years and then the rest was balenciaga so so yeah, like and then they all, I mean, again, they would so? always, they happen from so-and-so time and I couldn't always travel all the time with them. So it wasn't right. like I was, again, like I said, I got a little lazy. I wasn't really putting in as much work as I should have, you know, cause to get status in ballroom culture, which we'll get into a little bit more about the show legendary, which yeah. I'm fucking bored to fucking death with that show. I, so I think you I didn't like it. Times. Absolutely. I mean, it was okay. I just, it just wasn't, it's just, it's not ballroom to me. Oh, really? Well, that's because like, you well, were but... actually in ballroom, right? So, like, yeah, I just, like, mind I just you... don't like the, the scripted part of it. It's just, like, yeah. wow, like, you know? Okay, so, like, let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about Legendary, right? So, yeah. Legendary, um, Legendary is on HBO, and it is a competition-based show 
um, in a ballroom, like basically in a ballroom, like setting or whatever, they basically have, so there's how many houses? There's House of Ebony, there's House of Escada, House of Ninja, House of Gucci, uh, House of West, House of St. Laurent, and House of Lamban, and House of Balmain. So that was what they started with um, in the beginning of the show. And then obviously yeah. every week, these houses compete against one another and every week a one house is sent home and to the end when they have finally the season finale and then the last house is the winner takes home i believe it was a hundred thousand dollars hundred k yeah and then they had like they had like little mini they had like little mini pots like in between like the categories and stuff where right they, they had money balls like 5K or 10K. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah money balls yeah. yeah so um let's just talk about it then right so I have little notes on every house because I'm obsessed and I really enjoy the show, even though Orlando didn't clearly annoy it. But the thing is, he's coming from, if you understand, you have to come from, if you're coming from a person that has background or back ballroom experience and has been in the ballroom scene, it might be something where you're like, Ugh, this ain't real, like whatever. You know, I, yeah. I'm not, I've never been in a ball, I've never been in a house, like I've, I've been to balls, but like never like, you know, experienced being in a ball, in a house and in a, performing in a ball. So I stand. Yeah. But whatever, you're a professional, oh, and I'm not. But whatever, <laughs> I want to know what you're. No, I mean, it had it had it. I'm just curious. I want to know what you thought about each house and like the fathers and mothers and things like that, and like the performances too. Like, okay. so yeah. So let's just go yeah, through. Yeah. Um, go for it. Like, and so basically, yeah, ballroom. So when it came to like each house, like I thought there was some really special parts of like some people had really good people like that performed in their houses and some people just had really like awesome personalities and then they had a lot like kind of like they also showcase struggle stories and things like that so house yeah. of Escada, what did you think about okay. twilight do you know twilight or do you know of twilight i don't know twilight i've never seen him i've never really heard of twilight um but also oh. Escada, it's strange I, I think it's a house that's maybe coming back because for a while they kind of like disintegrated like they don't really, really they weren't around ballroom culture yeah it was a, it was a really big house here in chicago Okay. And I started, you know, even when I was still walking balls, like they had kind of like kind of went away. Like their members went from like 40 to 50 to like maybe like three or four. And it's like, ah. and I well, really heard of them. They so were when the I saw, underdog. When I saw them. They yeah. were the underdog when on the I show too. Them, yeah. Uh -huh. So when I saw them on the show and I was like, oh shit, I guess they brought the house back. Okay. But then I saw a lot of the members that were in it that were on the show. I yeah. was like, I've never seen any of these people, you know, like, why did they, why Sarah oh. Scott like, it was, so it made me think like, are they just like, did they put people in the house, just called it that, and I don't know, because the house mother is Toya, <laughs> to, no, day, so, to, to my knowledge, Toya well, is still in, the house mother in, in real Escada, life. In real life? In Escada, yeah, because in, yeah. in the show, it was London, and London mm -hmm. was the tall, like, tall black guy, but he was yeah, like yeah. their house father, no, he was like also the house mother, he called himself the house mother. But basically, like, yeah, they were the underguard underdogs the whole time. And so what, who was it? Um, it was um, the Erica, the house mother of House of Lanvan. Lanvan. Yeah, she was always talking shit about Escada because she was like, they're virgins. Like, they haven't even, like, they haven't even battled yeah. outside of the state. Like, they have, they've only exactly. Been, so that makes exactly. sense that you would say that you don't that really makes, know yeah. them because he's that's yeah. what she she was always throwing shade at them because she was like, um, yeah. they're virgins. Like, they haven't even traveled. Like, they haven't even yeah. left the state for to like to and do it sounds like super unnecessary but it's actually it's true i mean that's how ballroom works you know like you don't just like to me the name of the show to me didn't really make sense like it's called legendary and like these not a lot of them i don't i've never even heard of like how could ah. they be legends in ballroom culture when you're not legendary in life you know like so you just, felt like i mean not life people. just like in like real ballroom no, in culture. the culture yeah, yeah. you I felt thought, like other it, people could have been on the show like, yeah absolutely yeah. so like even like with all the other houses, I was just really fucking bored with the with the performances. I was like, "What the fuck am I watching?" Like, really? I feel like I've evoked I evoked better at my virgin days, like when I was first coming out. Oh, <laughs> you know, my like God. it's just it's just well, like again when you come from ballroom, like yeah. the actual being in it at like three four in the morning and it's like some warehouse and it's like a fucking crowd of like just like chanting and fucking like non scripted freestyle fucking just slamming onto the ground on every yeah. beat. Like, you know how they were just like it's because I think what they did to the show was they made it too scripted. They had people in houses that were actually decent voguers or some were very yeah. high elevated voguers. Michaela was and everything. You, I can't. She's like fucking dope as fuck. And she's oh like, my I've, God. I've her, she was backflipping like, in them pleaser up, heels. Sick, yeah. Backflipping. If you look up Michaela, like you see a bunch of her videos on YouTube and like either in DC yeah. or Philly or Chicago or New York or here or there. And I want to say, I think I saw him in Paris once, you know? So like yeah. that's, you know, he, he paved, you know, he worked for his, his, his space and he's fucking, he kills it every time, you know? And it's, 
my opinion on what I saw was they had good dancers, good bogers like Michaela have to stoop Kayla, down and like Jarell. dumb it down for somebody. They had to like dumb it down for somebody who was just like a runway oh, child who, yes. they, who they wanted okay. to make them vogue. Like he doesn't vogue. He's a runway kid. So it's like, right. I feel like t- to my, in my opinion, I would have fucking loved to have seen like fucking Leomi who was on the panel, like Ronaldo yes. Milan, Prince Milan or Naima Mugler or some other fucking badass vogers uh-huh. battling for a hundred fucking K, which is like, okay, they're going to fucking, they're fucking like their life depends on it. They're going to vogue the fuck down. And instead they had like mediocre people kind of like having to like be in sync when like, why do you have to do well, that? That's not what ballroom is. You I don't, you don't do, few, you don't do anything. You don't I do anything. Few people that like You don't do out. anything like, in ballroom, you don't do anything as a group like that. You do it's one by one, and you do what okay. you gotta do. You so don't you have to like, like the group it's not scene. a. You don't yeah, like I don't. The group scene it's not. It's just that's not what ballroom is. You know, it's not okay. not at all. I think um, that was very much scripted for television, though. You yeah, I know, no, for sure. Same thing with like the House of Ninja when they said it was like an yeah. all woman house. It's not an all yeah. woman house. It has there's like a lot of males in it, but they made it seem like it's it's it gave me very much of like America's Best Dance Crew, like how they had the, all the yeah. girl crew and like all the yeah. guy crew. It's like the thing is like, that's not. I was literally flat. very curious, oh, about your opinion about the House of Ninja being all women because- And they, I mean, I gathered, they killed it a lot. From what I gathered, like from what you've told me and what Eddie's told me, like women in the ballroom culture is something that like, it, was, it wasn't a thing in the past. Like it was, it was only <laughs> men and it was only the trans mm-hmm. community, the men. And so like, w- like, it was a controversial thing to have like fish, like, like be in like, in, like in like- It was, ballroom. yeah. I mean, you would have like, like maybe like one girl would walk like runway here and there in a the house and you, the category would be so fucking like open. Like they would have a category for like women's runway and they would only be like one competitor or two competitors. So it'd be like a really boring ass, like, competition within that category because there was only one person walking it so she didn't even have to battle she would just win the trophy because like, nobody mm. else walked so it was very like it was very like taboo you know like it wasn't yeah even... i mean like they 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 put it as if it was like a very positive thing in the show that there was like there was women in yeah. ballroom i mean yeah. i'm a woman and i really uh, appreciate and i'm like i love ballroom culture so like you know, obviously I still want to pay homage to who actually like who this was really made for and like, you know, yeah. how it was, you know, pay homage to the people that actually, you know, put so much work in like making it a thing. But um, yeah, I, I lived for the House of Ninja, and, but they got chopped pretty soon. They got chopped pretty early in the competition. Um, but sort I mean, of. no, I think they, they, I think they left when there was like only like five houses left. Oh, there was only what seven houses in total, right? I think so. There was so there was okay. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight houses. Yeah, there's eight houses. Okay. So they, yeah, they got they got chopped. I think when there was only like four houses left because it was them and three other houses. Because I remember towards the ending they were all like, I think it was the house of Escada or Balmain yeah. that was kind of doing homage to them like saying like you know if anybody were doing this for us for the house of ninja they became yeah. really good friends with them on the show or something yeah mm-hmm. which is good i mean i get that because again ninjas are very known for being very like welcoming and very like i love felt and like very like yeah they're yeah. cool did you they're, like they're the cool. did you like the the asian girl with the blue hair or no yeah that she said yeah she's actually she's been to chicago a few times i've seen really? her around here um she comes into chicago she's really good friends with eddie um, I want to meet her. Stuff. Oh my god! I need yeah. to go with Eddie. And I've never, I've never met her, but I've seen her. I've seen her around. But I know she's really good friends with Eddie and the girl Dolores, I believe as well. Oh, for, oh, Dolores uh, too. The one that said the thick, the thick booty yeah. bitch. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. I was she's so a redhead, curious. I think. From because I was like, are these like, like you said, like I, I wanted to know whether or not this was really real. And like, first of all, I've follow yeah. a lot of them on, on Instagram and like also like social media now because I'm obsessed with the show and like so I found and plus I've been yeah. always I've been like following ballroom too for a while we, we me and you just send each other ballroom clips all the time because I'm just like oh my god because <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know, we're obsessed yeah. but um yeah so like the few people I mean I understand what you're saying a hundred percent you said a lot of these people in the show you know he wasn't familiar with it so he you would have preferred to see bigger names on the show because especially with the show being called yeah. legendary but who knows maybe from this exactly. it will be, it will become like more of a mainstream Hopefully. that's the whole thing is like ballroom yeah. wasn't mainstream ballroom wasn't like the fact that this show is even on TV and it's got a platform yeah. now is is huge. I would say, wouldn't you say? Because you said absolutely you said ball, ball balls were only, and this is why I never could really go to balls in the beginning. Like in the beginning, like you would invite me to balls, and it would be two in the fucking morning. I'd be like, do I don't know. I'd be at home <laughs> sleeping, and you'd be like, hey, bitch, do you want to go to ball right now? I was like, 
what the fuck? Are you, it's two in the morning. You're like, yeah, I know. Like, we just I'm found like, yeah, out. Starts, like, I'm like, yeah, but it starts at four. We're going at right. Eight. And I was like, four. what? Like, it was. This is how <laughs> the culture is. Like, this is how ballroom yeah. is. And the thing is, like, I was always so upset because I would miss out because Eddie would be like, Eddie would be hitting me up like, hey, bitch, I think there's like a ballroom tonight. Like. Yeah. You know, and it'd be like like eleven. He'd text me and be like, "I think there's a ball." Like, you know, I'll, you know, and I was like, "Um, I have plans already, or I, I'm out, or I'm at I'm home. Like, I'm sleeping. <laughs> like, it would be. It's very sporadic. It's very last minute. So like, I could never yeah. prepare myself, and I just don't live that way. It's hard. So yeah. that's the thing. It's it, unless you're really about that life, it's hard to really commit fully. 100% to ballroom culture yeah. and being in, in a house because you literally have to drop everything, right? Yeah, I to took train. Becky to one in Dalton years ago. Stop, really? Yeah, she lived she for it. Life. She loved it, yeah. You know, she she's another life. gay man as well. So, like, she she loved it. Yes, your cousin is a gay man. We yeah. can talk about that in our episode. But, yeah, you know, go back to the show, like, as far as, like, Legendary, I would have loved to have seen a lot of big names. And not only because for the competition of it, but just because I feel like a lot of people out there in the scene, not that one deserves it more than the other, but mm -hmm. when it comes down to, like, status, like, they've been proving themselves since the beginning of, like, my time in ballroom culture. Like, that was in 2007. I've been seeing, like... Leomis or the Ronaldos or yeah. um, a bunch of other names like walk state to state and travel back and forth, lose money or like yeah. not win anything, but come back and keep trying and go back. And, they, you know, they really worked for it and to see like other names that I've never really heard of. You're and like, again, since it's coming, well, you know, the, it's, it's, an, it's mainstream now. Like, I feel like the ones who deserve it are the ones who have kind of like worked for it. And people, people in ballroom who started like four or five years ago, like not to kind of throw any names out there, but like, or like talk shit about it like the ninjas you know like they, the girls yeah. all them like they made it on but yeah. a lot of a lot of new voguers the, the way you start voguing is you look at people's craft and you make it your own so you're taking other people's moves and putting like your little touch to it yeah. so a lot of these people do that they took other people's moves and made it their own but now they're on the show but the reason why they got their moves is because the person that they took it from you know what i'm saying so it's kind of like the people that made those and moves they're not known there for their, their movement they're not there yeah. so it's like ah. Eh. One, they would have been that. better performers, and two, they yeah. would have deserved it more. So it's I can like, respect that. Yeah. I, I am curious how they casted this show, mm -hmm. because like you said, there were other people, like, you felt like, you know, that could have been, you know, in there. But I'm just curious how they, how it was cast. The host, I mean, the host, the host himself is a, is an icon in ballroom. Like, he's massive. Yes. Well, West did you, did you Sean? check out the, the dance, like, you know how, yeah, when, towards um, the end of it, yeah. Yeah, towards like, the end, like, Laomi, like, in yeah. him, like, when they performed it, it was cute, you know what I'm saying? They showed, yeah, they and had they're a both, show. they're both iconic. Yeah, they had to show like what they were working with, you know, like that, the reason why they're there and like who they are and like why that, you know, they're in the legendary status yeah. or whatever. Who knows? Maybe they'll, maybe those people will, maybe the people that you really want to see will be back in the, in the other, maybe, la yeah. maybe later. I mean, the, the little one, the little one too that I sent you in the past, like Honey Balenciaga, um, the little one with like the, with the blonde hair on top, like the little like yes. the bowl cut him, like he's really good. Like he was in like one of those snippets of it yes. as well. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe like next season, you know, they, they got the one that was the one that was better in the show right like towards the end mm -hmm. yeah because he was uh, a part of the uh the the villain the villains sickening yeah mm -hmm. i don't know why he wasn't in the whole show because he was yeah great. that's what i'm saying because he had a lot of really good like, performers you know like ronaldo yeah. milan not alone he's like he's a professional ballet dancer you know and he's like, yeah. the stretches and the moves and like javier ninja would have been great for like he's literally a fucking rubber a human rubber band like he'll yeah. be like <laughs> It's like, oh my and like God. drink tea at the same time. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like I, a few people that I did want to shout out because I did think they did an amazing job. You know, I'm not a, you yeah. know, I'm mind you. No, I'm not for sure. Some people, some, some people did really good. Yeah. Did, like did really I'm in the well, dance community you know? too. I want to pay um, like respect to Jarrell. Jeter was amazing too. Michaela obviously yeah. was fucking phenomenal. Um, those were the people that like Jarrell was a trained dancer. So like Jarrell was, yeah. um, Jarrell was a uh, house of Gucci. I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jarrell. Oh, no, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm getting, no, it's not Jarrell. No, it was, Jarell, uh, Jarell's the tall, the tall, the pretty one. Jarell was the body, the pretty one. With yeah. the body, yeah, body. Yeah, yeah Jarell yeah. was body. Jeter was the dreads. Jeter was fucking phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I loved Jeter. No, was it, it was, was uh, he Balmain? I think it was Balmain. It was Jamari. Right? It was Jamari, yeah. It was uh, House of Balmain, the winner. Yeah. The ones mm -hmm. that won. So it was uh, the house father, Jamari. He was phenomenal. Like, I could not yeah. stop watching Jamari. But, um... Yeah, and like, did you live for like the house mother of London, London, like with a house? Erica. Erica, Erica yeah. Did you live? Yeah, yeah, she was, yeah, she, she, was, she was good. I, 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 she actually like, I think she like developed like she got into like her ballroom, 
She got like her ballroom legs because she fucking forced it. Again, she's a face. She's a face she's kid, a face. so she's known yeah. for face in ballroom. Right. So you don't have to like Vogue or dance. You just have to right. go out there and fucking. She actually like, went out there and know, dance. Sell it and shit. Yes, yeah, so she yeah. she did it. She did it. She did it. She wasn't like a fucking like wow. Like she fucking killed it, but she fucking made right. it work. She and, admitted you know, it though on the show. She mm-hmm. was like, "Listen, I don't dance, honey." Yeah, I'm she does that. You don't have like... to. And yeah, and face yeah. is like one of those categories that's up there. That's like fucking like it's one of those top notch categories because you, you it's not like you can craft. It, craft no. it or make it work you, you either have to fucking it. do it you have to be born with it yeah you know? or so. i mean or you could buy it i guess <laughs> for sure i mean but they there's tricks to that you know I've, right, I've seen right. that shit firsthand like if you don't have good skin and you have to cover it with foundation like they'll like call you yeah. to the judges panel like reach up to me and they'll touch you they'll fucking grab a kleenex and be like let me see oh, like that shit and be like what the fuck is that like get the fuck off the stage really you know? like, yeah yeah it's oh very my cutthroat. god when it came to the first body challenge, uh, how did you feel about that? Because the winner was a uh, pack rat, right? Yeah. And she, she was body. like a thick, she was down. a thick bitch yeah. like me. So I was like super, mm-hmm. and then like obviously Megan the Stallion was one of the um, judges on the show actually. So yeah. it's awesome if you guys love her. She's on the show. So definitely watch that. But um, body was, Jarrell was the house Jarell. father of House of Gucci, right? Sickening. His body was yeah everything yeah. I mean, we cannot deny that body yeah. was everything and he was pressed because he did not win the first the first um ball when it came to like the body challenge like mm-hmm. it was um first of all it was dolores though dolores had that ass which i was like damn it like came out of yeah. nowhere her mug yeah. isn't really you know there mm-hmm. but and, so, and, and when you walk like sex siren and and body yeah you incorporate all that into it you have to sell sex appeal you can't be sexy as fuck if you're like a baby i'm not saying she's like i'm not saying she's like pop but she was like a she's like a solid six you know not like like where 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 pack rat she's a stripper the body and, she was the, and a stripper. the body the face yeah. and then jerrell had, had like you know he's he had, he had the height he has the body he had yes, muscular he's, body he's, exactly yeah. you know so i want to i, I, I want to be was, in that was, category so bad i would like love that you. love it yeah, I no, that one. If, I think that, I wonder if there's balls going on in Chicago nowadays with all this that's going on. I wonder if they figured out a way to do it or I whatnot. Because I've been seeing like clips on the line where there's like, and I'm like, is that like a current one? And then I'll see it and I see people in the back with like masks. So I'm like, yeah, it's definitely. Current. Oh, it's really? Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, Not, I, no, that, bueno, no bueno, right? But still, I would probably. I know. Because <laughs> balls, that's the thing. Like, towards the end, like the season finale of the show, it actually filmed during the COVID, uh, the, the crisis, mm-hmm. like during the pandemic. So if you watch the show, the final is not with an audience because uh, the season finale was not, uh, not with the audience because of the fact they wanted it to be safe. Like New York City was hitting crazy numbers when it came to coronavirus. And so they basically decided to finish the show with no audience. So it did kind of lose its yeah. like oomph at the end, you know, because yeah. of like there the was no... The good thing is it was, like, it was like the last, it was the last episode though, wasn't it? I think it, it was, was the, the finale, episode, yeah. It was, it was, yeah. It was, it was the, the last show. Yeah, th- but they had, a, a, yeah. they had to like explain why there was nobody in the yeah. audience because they wanted it to be safe because obviously there was yeah. like a rule with like no groups of 500 more or more because they wanted to keep it safe. So obviously they couldn't have a audience. So that kind of took yeah. away from the whole like screaming and the excitement and everything. But um, I still, I still am very happy with who won house of Balmain uh, was the winner. They, they were great. I think that Jamari was a great father house father. Um, I loved their house. Uh, what do you think oh did you think that that was a solid like do they deserve to win house of balmain or do you think another house um yeah i think towards i mean if it was to be between the ones that were at the end which was balmain and escada it definitely would have been escada i think escada had like better performance like really they just yeah i just think that mm -hmm. i mean no what i I think who who if i was to like early in the competition say who was gonna win this when when they all came out and they introduced all the houses i'm like yeah the house of the house of west or the oh my god are me too oh i was gonna say yeah. that i was like why did the house of west get cut so fast they got chopped so quick yeah i was literally gonna say what did you think about the house of west that's on here so the house, house of, of i want to say I, i'm trying to think about again you know my memory is shit but it's like if i, I remember no- the house of <laughs> the house of west like the members yeah. I know there was like there was like maybe three or four that I that I do see in balls. Like I seen uh-huh. them, I heard of them, and I'm like, okay, they yeah. perform really good. But yeah. then again, some of them like they perform better than others. So when they try to do stuff in sync, it kind of fucks them up. It, oh. All the houses, all the I feel like this fucked everybody up. All the houses like would have to be in sync with something as far yeah. as performing. But um, the House of West I know has very talented dancers. Um, you know, and I knew I, I was did. like, okay, they're gonna kill it. There one, there's some of my favorite vloggers come from the House of West. Yeah, and. I was like, they're gonna fucking kill this shit. Like, this is gonna be them. But then they got chopped. You know, like they they took them out. 
But they um, I think like they would have the first one. I think they yeah, they were like the first. They were like the I think they were like the second. Or second. I can't. I think they were Something they were like chopped that. very early, and I was very shocked because when, like you said, the per, the beginning was when they introduced the houses, right? I thought mm-hmm. that they won. Like the House of West was very unique and super different. I feel like they should have stayed longer and they didn't get the love that they deserve because yeah. I wanted to see more from them and they got chopped right yeah. away. I thought they were. So- I mean, the house of West, the house of West alone in ballroom culture is still a very hot dominating house. Like it's very hot when you hear at a ball, you hear like the West, okay. let's yeah. go West. Like you hear that, like you're like, yeah. oh, some bad bitches about to come on and start doing some aerial fucking area, fucking acrobatic shit and flipping because one of the guys on there, would have been like another fucking flip competitor with Michaela because yes. they, they're really big on flipping, you know? It's like, right. it's done. It's, it's entertaining to watch somebody do some shit in heels and it's fucking hard. land on the back and it's get so up. Hard. Yeah. So yeah, you have to give is. people respect. If they can flip, like, I can't flip. Yeah. I got splits. I got, you know, all that shit. But <laughs> flipping is like a talent. And then like Michaela flipping in heels. I'm sorry. That's so fucking hard. She's so yeah. talented. Yeah. I love Michaela. I stand for Michaela. Yeah. House of mm-hmm. West was, was great. I wanted to see more from them. And I was kind of sad when yeah. they got chopped so early. Um, but yeah, I, when it, you know me, I'm a dancer. So like when it comes to technique and like the, the lines bitch and all that the flexibility i say that wins over everything yeah the one thing though i can't do is i can't death drop and i'm so sad i needed i need to take a ballroom like it's hard class. death dropping scares <laughs> i haven't me. done it in a while it's like hard when i was younger i could like do it but it's like now i'm like i'll fucking break a knee man you know like how do you fall and not yeah, twist the fuck out of your ankle yo? it's like, yeah you, I mean, you will. I remember the first time I tried to do it. Just the hell <laughs> you of will. It, I almost popped. My, my fucking ankle popped. And it was, I remember oh. I was walking, I was walking Thug Realness still at the time. So I, we were just fooling around at, at one of our fucking members' house. And we're just bullshitting, you know, just yeah. throwing the shits, right? And we're like, like oh, Vogue. So I tried to do it. And then I like yeah. and fell. And I was like, Ooh. fuck, it popped. So my ankle was ah. like that fucking fat. But then I had to walk. I had to walk the ball later that night. So I had to walk the real. I walked with a fucking limp thinking it was like ah. part of my foot. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least it was thug realness you know because you can kind of get that away right with thug realness you can just like yeah uh-huh. oh wow yeah death drop like that shit i was like man I, I need to learn and like duck walking like i can duck walk but it's just like in yeah. heels and things like that like those are like it's just there's so much technique like there's a lot of like the stuff because i was i'm you know i'm a pole dancer of seven years but there's a lot of things that we did in pole like shoulder stands and like all the splits and they, they, those things that we do in pole too you know uh, which of course mm-hmm. I'm sure Paul has taken it from ballroom. So, cause ballroom was, you know, yeah. but I know how to do all those other things. But when it came to like death drops, like I need to learn how to like properly death drop where I don't break my ankle, you know, like I, I can see learn. that. I could definitely see you guys having like the same type of strategies on how to learn something like in ballroom culture. When I was a ninja, they taught us to like, so they would to Vogue to like for your lines to be straight and everything. They put you in like a fucking, like a refrigerator carton box, like a, the box that come in a fridge, the, the refrigerators really? come in, the big brown, the big brown boxes. Yeah. And you would stand there, you had to like Vogue in line, like you can't hit the wall. So it's kind of like, you have to like arm yeah. control. And like, that was like the really hands like, category, right? Yeah. Like the hands, like all that. No, yeah. they're just voguing, voguing in general. So you wouldn't, oh, okay. you have to like perfect your lines with not hitting any of the walls. So that's crazy. That was kind of like, a, that, they would say that or like use your shadow, like on a wall, like uh-huh. move, move with your shadow, like body movements and sway and all that shit. So oh, I can body. see like the stripper, like the, the stripper, the pole yeah. dancing being kind of the same. Yeah, very much like, you know, that's why for me, the you only tell category, the story, You tell the story with your body. Right, right. Like, that's for, for me, the only category I feel like I would be really comfortable in is sex iron body. Because I would be, yeah. you know, I would, yeah. I would think sex iron. your thing. Because that's like my thing. So I'm like, yeah, I would. I would be good at sex. Yeah. I would fuck, you know, <laughs> you've seen I'm me. Oh, sex. you've wanna, seen me. Eh, you know, I would be out there like, yeah, that would be so much fun too. You Because I live yeah. off a crowd. Like, I live yeah. off of like. The, the, mm-hmm. the excitement, the claps, like the energy of the crowd. I've done a lot of performances, so um, you yeah. never went to one of the performances, but whatever. Mm-hmm. But I did. And I, I, yeah, I did. You did? Did you go yeah, to one I of my... With, I, oh, the yeah, first with, one. It was like yeah. my first, first, first one. Yeah, oh, I was the one that baby. mattered. <laughs> I was a baby. I remember yeah. that one. That was cute. No, you, you did come. You did come. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, I went like, to your, and then I, went to, I took your pole class, too. You did. So, yeah, right. you did. Aw, Orlando. Orlando. Yeah, I know. You were yeah. mask boots in there with your sweatpants and shit. People were, like, all confused. Just... Like, what the fuck? What, why is he here? All the girls were nervous. I know all the girls <laughs> were like, oh, my God. So cute. I'm like, you guys... <laughs> You don't have to. He's not. He's not looking at you. Don't worry. It's fine. I just like death. Orlando. Like, oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, I was like, Orla- He ain't looking at you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But yeah. So yeah. Cute, cute. Um. Yeah. So I was gonna say like, 
uh, I wanted to like talk about so just like highlights and stuff because like I'm like, oh, one thing that oh a couple things, but like for first of all, I was very confused <laughs> about the the judging something like the special guest judges, like why was Chance the Rapper's brother there? <laughs> <laughs> right. Did you like? I why was, was kinda... honestly why was Meg Thee Stallion there as well? And but, and, but you know what? Off. She's hot right now. She's hot right. That's now. That's what it is. And Same thing with the um Jamila and she's Jamil. a performer, so she performed for the show at the finale. So that's all about. That's that's why. It's like but, I I think like Jamila Jamila is probably gonna come out with like some spinoff show. That's why she was like the host and stuff as well. How do you like, like her? Cool, she, I mean, she was cool. I mean, I love her accent. <laughs> I love how she I, says I for her. She's status, sh- or status, <laughs> your status, status, your status, like, status. Your status. like yeah, I, you know, my, my first, my first gog. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I just experienced my first gog. <laughs> yeah, like I enjoyed her accent, but I just like yeah. when you would hear her and see her going to Laomi or the other ones, but like, hey, like which one was that one? Was she doesn't know ballroom, so it's she like, does, what are they yeah, doing judging? Clear. They're they're clear. judging they're judging ballroom without ever being at a ball or like knowing what to look for. Yeah. So that was another thing that they really need to work on in my opinion was get a better judges. judges panel i wouldn't even be mad if they had actual like ballroom people as judges like even if they I were would just think guests they should. but they would be but they would just be not that they had to be there the entire show but like you know like like cycle them out like in one one episode have like five other ballroom like legends from the ballroom culture like have them like judge it and then the next yeah. batch comes in and batch comes in and over and over instead of like yeah. these people that are like having to learn what ballroom is and judge is like oh yeah i like that one because they probably just like Literally. the boots better than the fucking the top it's like no it doesn't make sense it was it was like Chance the Rapper's brother, right? He was like there. And then they were like, there was a, I forgot which, which house performed. And they were, they clearly were needed to be chopped. Like they were not good. And he was like, yeah, that was really, I like that you guys were like yourselves. Like it was, <laughs> what? I was like, who is <laughs> she? Get, him out, get her out of here. Like, why are you here? It was so confusing to me. And then yeah. there was that one guy. The white guy. The, the white, white guy. guy. I was like, I, was like, I mean. Just- I did clock. Like I just kept. I just kept like looking him, looking at him, look at Jarrell's package when he would walk by. Right, like, he right. He kept picking Jarrell. I was like, he's just, he's like, he's like BBC hungry. Like that's what he is. Clearly, <laughs> clearly, like that's like. Why are you here? like? I agree in that sense because like the judging was a little weird. Like I mean, like I did see like Kelly Osbourne. Like she, she claims that she's like obsessed about her. Yeah. So like, I can see that though. I feel she's always yeah. been like a she's always been like a true supporter of the LGBTQ community. You know, but and so yeah. like they had like a guest have like a celebrity guest i would say like her would be a good one right because like, she actually else? like, like knew. Big and, yeah like she knows the gay culture you know right. so right. that would have been fine right. yeah, all these other ones i was like blah like get off the stage man yeah. like who are you <laughs> no i i understand like the thing is like when it comes to production because you know I'm, I'm in the film world i'm an actor so like i understand what hbo was trying to do when it came because it's got to be entertaining right a traditional yeah. ball at three and four three or four in the morning it's one of those things where you have to be there right to feel that energy to really understand and love what that is but like having it read on tv has to be this like different world so like obviously that's where the group performances come in like like orlando was saying that's not a traditional way that's not traditionally ballroom right so it's really just one of those like one one people like one person category like people one one person in your house goes out at a time, competes for the for that category, and that's how it works. That's typically how it works, right? Yeah. But these little like these group performances and things, that was purely entertainment for the show. For you sure, know? and it would have been good like here and there. But if, if every single category and episode was the same way, like I feel like if I was to like give my advice to the show, and if they would even hear it out, right? Let's say like magically that would happen. Hi, would be like Hi, HBO. Would, <laughs> would be like you know like yeah, you have different houses have Michaela against pussy west come out and like they have to do the same thing against each other like together like so now you have a competition between two people going at it instead mm-hmm. of like scripting something and having to like practice it and like have yeah. to like be like your other member or try to do something that your other member is doing like that would have been yeah. more entertaining even if, if you don't want to have like one by one only like have two people from different houses and kind of just compete against each other and really fucking compete and look like it's a hundred it's like a hundred k's on the line right like the only time i felt that was a, like in, in the traditional ballroom state is when, was when they had to battle battle for their lives right at the, towards the end because yeah, yeah. honey like, to, to keep to keep their spot on the show yeah exactly there was a couple because it wasn't because that because that wasn't scripted right now it wasn't no scripted, no but those were you, that's what really that was the most it. entertaining thing yeah exactly and like that was when they like it was really a ball but that was when I felt like it got really like there were a couple nasty fucking battles and i was like living like michaela is so yeah. amazing she was Mik- i think she was battling at short can i take my sweater off it's a little a little long let me take this off okay can i yeah but move your hat from the camera duh oh shit my God. <laughs> <laughs> orlando's forgetting that this is visuals as well <laughs> orlando's like i'm hot he just wants to show off for y'all he just wants to show you guys Ooh. 
Yes. If you guys are watching, Orlando's got guns. Yes. Mask boots. Walking bodies. Like, yes, body. <laughs> Orlando, do They're body. like flabby body. realness. Flabby realness. <laughs> Honey, you gotta be confident. You gotta own it, otherwise they don't know. Like, what? What was that? Bless his heart. What was his name? But he, when he was in Body, do you remember that? And then he got chopped right away. He was from the House of Escada, I think. He was like the. Oh, he was like really hella skinny, right? He, no, like... he was like kind of like he was like a little chubby actually. He was like he had hair. Fuck. He was like I forgot his name. I'm so sorry. If he wasn't, if I didn't remember, he wasn't that memorable. Yeah. Well, he got chopped right away. But he was like, <laughs> it was my first time doing Body, and I'm like. I'm proud of my body, and you know, I was like, "Aw." I mean, yeah, yeah, like, chop, <laughs> chop, right, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, like, fuck, I'm like blanking right now that I can't remember his name. The 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 judge that was doing fashion, fuck. Uh, law or something. Law, yeah, La Roche, La Roche, La Roche, or whatever. La, La, La Roche. La Roche. Like that, yeah. Um, yeah, she was him. like, you know she him? was like cut, she was like cutthroat sometimes, but like you said, like it needed to happen, like. She was kind of like, no, no. Like, she'd yeah. be, like, kind of like the, like, tougher judge. Laomi, like, like she was, like, truthful. Because she actually knows mm -hmm. how it is to be in the ballroom. Like, she's a true ballroom. I feel like her opinion mattered the most to me out of everyone. Oh, absolutely. She was the only one that knew what to look for. That's why they were like, Laomi, yeah. what are we looking for in this? What are we right, for like, right. What we, they would what always ask for? her. Yeah. Like, what was Tamar on there for? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> She had a, no, she had the nerve to cop an attitude. Like, it's, yo, she got, she got into like a that she fight. steals all her fucking lingo and shit from like black culture and like black gay culture. Like, yeah, I was like, what? Black, but like, is this? Black, yeah, I'm just like, girl, like, hey, aunt, like, be respectful. Had the nerve to get into a fight. Yeah, legit. What about what was her Dominique or um, she was in Pose. Pose. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dominique. Yeah. Dominique, yeah, Dominique so, too. Yeah, like, how did you feel about her? Because she I was talking about, talk about I'm ballroom culture. And I'm yeah, like, she came no, with the attitude. How did you feel about her? <laughs> <laughs> She's massive. I was She's her, like, tall as fuck. No, wardrobe needed to give her a different, like, bodice. Because, like, <laughs> like, it was really annoying me the way that her, like, bodice was sitting on her, like, on her like yeah. chest it was like it looked like a muffin cake like on the side and shit. <laughs> i was like uh somebody yeah. fix her bodice just, for me just the attitude was just too much you know you, it was have, a lot. you have a lot of you have a lot of girls like that in ballroom culture that surprisingly can be better and would be more respected in ballroom if they were just a little bit more humble she's one of those girls that yeah. has a, the limelight went to her head and she fucking like she has to get up and be like i'm this i'm that like laomi yeah. would be the only one on that panel could have been that and said something like that and gotten away yeah. with it, but she never, yeah. she never did, you know, because she's, no. she paved her way. She worked, her, she clawed her way up and she's fucking, she's up there and she's well respected for being like a humble performer. Yeah. She gives, she critiques hard. She votes hard. Sometimes, you know, she has a problem with her performance. If she's being judged on a, at a ball and she yeah. doesn't agree with it, then she'll fucking take the mic and go off. But with reason, she won't be like, well, I'm, I'm this, give me this because I'm that. Like, it's right. not that. You I don't do that, that in ballroom. You can't, you can't do that in ballroom because they'll fucking eat your ass up and no. they'll spit your ass out in five minutes. You know, like you can be hot as fuck on the week of January and then like first week of February, like, who are you? Right, like, exactly. We like, never like- Who is she? Blah, exactly. Right. Orlando, so, if, if, what, do you, what house do you think I should be in? <laughs> you, I would, honestly, I would see you like, I would see you in the house of Ebony for sure. Yes. Yeah, house what was Ebony. with- how did you feel about the house of ebony the house mother being white that was very confusing. so she's not so i'm saying like toya is the house mother and toya right. is the house mother that i know overall house mother of like from like paris chicago new york everywhere you yeah. have you have i mean you have parents in each chapter but toya is the house mother the overall house mother of the house of ebony and so, like, i've seen her she's this she's this big bitch with some big ass fucking titties fucking banjee yeah. boots i've seen her like <laughs> do some crazy ass shit at balls and that's like this this white woman with children at home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and a, like a white husband, and her name was Isla yeah. or something. Yeah, Isla. Yeah, so, and I was very okay, yeah, confused. That's I was like, who, who, I was like, like, who are these people? House of Ebony, like Ebony is literally like <laughs> Ebony Magazine, like black cult, duh, black. And it was like, I was like, what is happening? Like, I don't know what the, I don't know what the producers were trying to do. I think they were trying to form this sort of like, obviously we're having House of Ninja being all women and having like the house mother of Ebony be white. They were trying to form some sort of like, I don't know, like, oh, all, you know, 
exclusivity or whatever but it's like tr- stay true to like what's what ballroom culture is because it's like this isn't yeah mean. and that's that's what i want that's again that's what i would have preferred to have seen because yeah. it's just it's a good long time for ballroom to like you know for a long time you know we performed or you know went to them or just created these fucking amazing times and nights legendary moments mm-hmm. um underground you know it wasn't mainstream so for it to be mainstream now and not be able to showcase what it really is and how hard they worked kind of like it it, it just hit a little wrong for me it's just like i would have appreciated seeing people that really worked hard and paved the way for the for the for the culture to be mainstream to like not be able to do their thing granted and like even some of them who were on the show but just weren't even able to really showcase who they really are as a performer right 100 percent. i agree Mm -hmm. well that was a lot of legendary um, mm-hmm. I think we should need, I think we should go ahead and take a break. So yeah, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back after these messages. Bye. And okay. we are back. Um, so yeah, so that was, um, the legendary recap ballroom culture recap. Thank you so much, Orlando, because that was really fun. I really wanted to sit You're very welcome. to you because that right there, I was like, I want to talk to Orlando. He's been in balls, balls. He's performed. He's been in houses. Like I need some, perspective from someone that's actually been in it you know what I mean so like I'm just a stan like I love the show I love ballroom culture but I wanted your opinion for sure so thank you for sharing that um I want to move on to the next segment um um, so yeah basically every week we do uh a meditate masturbate and medicate segment so which one do you want to talk about Mr. Orlando Um, I feel like last time I heard you do meditate with your friend um Jarrell was it I believe that was Jeremy on? yeah Jeremy oh, we, did, I heard we that. did medicate we were talking medicate. about medicate so mm-hmm. I'm gonna I mean I had my Pornhub sweater on let's do masturbate <laughs> yes <laughs> I know he was already supporting <laughs> I'm like it's like is it like 9 p.m it's like almost time for it anyways it's like let's fuck it. <laughs> that's why I was like we gotta let's wrap we gotta shit. get going <laughs> we gotta get to the juicy stuff so speaking of Pornhub let's talk about it masturbate so clearly um Let's talk about porn. Fuck it. Okay. Or Pino, oh, yeah. which if, if you listen to these, Deezus and Mero, Pino is what they call it, which is so funny. Deezus and Mero is hilarious. Orlando, if you don't know who they are, put you on. Okay. But anyways, uh, masturbate. So when it comes to uh, masturbating, do you need porn? Do you, is it necessary? Do you use it every it single is. time? Every single time. Yes. Okay. Every single time. I can't do visuals. If I do visuals, it has to be like, because my phone died or <laughs> the laptop isn't working. <laughs> it's like a lazy way. You're like, oh, I got to think of some shit in my head. Like, okay. Fuck it. It's just like, I got to do it. Or it's like, walk outside and like, who do I pick? Hey, you, come here. Help me. <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. I uh, can I, like, I'm sure you have a whole like folder of, you know, fucking... <laughs> you know, content that you can pull up if you if your phone <laughs> ran out of battery or some shit. But is, is Pornhub your go-to, like, website? No, it's not, actually. I just really like, I really like the hoodie of Pornhub. So I just, <laughs> I like, I like the colors of it. But um, my go-to is xnxx.com. Their videos are a lot longer, and there's a lot more categories. You gotta put me uh, on. Yeah, I it's really good. This one. Yeah, it's called xnxx. I mean, it's very weird, right? Like, the, the, the yeah. website sounds weird. xnxx. I don't even know what it stands for, but there's three X's in it, so it's good. <laughs> Who? What was and that? I said there's like I don't know what it stands for. I don't know where their end comes in, but there's three X's, so it's obviously explicit. So, so it's so it's gonna be good. I you know yeah. I love X videos. It's all, that's always been my go-to. It's X videos. That's decent. There was that or like Tube Eight was good for a while, and then it's just like they have like a lot of like two-minute videos. I'm like, wow, oh, like I don't I can't. No, do I need a little. I, I need to like restart point. it, go back and restart it again. Yeah, no, like, I don't got time for all that. My hands are busy. Yeah. My hands are busy. Right. I can't. Right. <laughs> I need like a, I need and the thing is like like I you know I'm a I'm a girl you know whatever but yeah. like I'm a girl that watches porn like I am you know I've tried to wean myself off of it it's really hard but when you're lazy and you're just like I don't want to think I don't want to make up things in my head I just want to watch something get off right. real quick and that's it you know what I mean yeah so, yeah absolutely. I watch porn I love porn whatever I will be the, you know that bitch but X video especially with COVID going on I'm pretty sure a lot of that's been going on. Oh, you know the porn the porn community is making sh- money right now. You know that yeah. shit. I oh, mean, look at look sure. at X. Look at everyone that has an OnlyFans. I mean, like, how many people yeah. started OnlyFans from this? Like, people are at home. I know. You know, they want to like you know whatever. Some people that are by themselves are just like you know that's all. One they of have. our one of our close friends. We won't say the name, but one of our close friends in in the group chat. I was talking to her the other day, and I was like, "What are you doing?" She's like, "Bitch, I've been in bed. I masturbated for like eight hours already. My clothes about to burn off." <laughs> 
Shit. Been there, like, oh. done that. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, Armand, remember when I was like single and I would literally do that? Like, what is Kim doing? Like, what is she up to? Like, oh, you know what she's at. masturbating for hours <laughs> yeah. upon hours. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Hey, you know what? It's you know you gotta love on yourself. It's the self care moments, you know. It's honestly Self-love. some of the best pleasure. I would even some. I feel like it'd be really close to like if I had to choose like what's better, like actual physical contact or like the porn part of it. I would probably end up picking like the physicality part of it but it would be very close with just watching porn alone See, that's dangerous that's very dangerous you know? and you know what that's a movie there's a movie called fuck it has Jor- jason gordon levitt in it and it, i forgot the name i'm gonna bring i'm gonna mention then i'll figure it out in the next episode i'll remember i'll remind you guys but okay. it's a movie and it's um it's got sarah it's got what's her name scarlett johansson and Ooh. she's Scarlett Johansson plays the girl, the main girl, and then she's a lead woman, and then it's uh, J- Jason Gordon Levitt, which is from you know, he's from like um, yeah, yeah. Wasn't he like wasn't he one of those like kid like all the like young girls like loved him like well no he was in Third Rock from the Sun and he's like now like if you see him you'll be like oh I know exactly like, oh that this is how like this is how how not starstruck I'm like who is that what I know you're just like, like, who, like who are they whatever <laughs> no so basically the whole movie is based off of like this guy has a porn obsession. And he, he finds this, like, hot girl. Like, he's obsessed with this girl. He finally gets her that they're boyfriend-girlfriend, but he'd rather jerk off than be with her. And so, like, yeah. that's the whole premise of the movie. And, like, so basically, like, he meets, like, fuck, he meets, oh, my God, what's her name? She's iconic, too. She's this redheaded um, actress. I'm so not prepared. I'll figure out the name later, and I'll tell you guys. But she, he meets her, and, like, she basically, like, kind of, like, opens his eyes to, like... Emma Stone? No, not... No, she's, like, she's, like... <laughs> she's like old boots like she's like like a, like a like a Meryl street like she's like old she's old boots she is she's not like she's not like young she's like but she's very talented if you see her you'd be like oh yeah yes mary like totally. okay but she like basically teaches him how to like kind of like you know have 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 like relate like have physical sex, sex physically yeah and like emotion tied to it again and shit like that okay. so it's kind of beautiful i actually really love the, the movie um i can see that i mean it's uh, just like Honestly, like sometimes it's just the physical part. It's faster, it's easier, and it's like you see what you want. And I don't know. It's just ugh, sometimes, you know, sometimes sex isn't fulfilling with somebody else. They don't really do it right or they're not. Sometimes, you know, both one one party, and I, I've, I've been guilty of this sometimes where I don't express like what I want to do and I just like wait for them to want to do something and I should have like voiced it and been a little bit more vocal about it. And I wasn't. So then there's, you run that risk of not being fulfilled. And then you got to sit there and like close your eyes and I just, some other shit like it's like instead of oh my God. speaking you on it and be movie. like hey like this is what i want you are the guy from this way it's na- the, the name of the movie is don juan so it's d-o-n-j-o-n don don john oh. or don juan or don john or whatever okay. d-o-n-j-o-n and it has um yeah so it's got jo- <laughs> J- joseph joseph gordon gordon levitt and then it's got juliana moore she's the she's the old school you know you again you if you see her you'd be like oh that bitch okay yeah um okay. yeah it's it's good i'm gonna have to like have you watch that one because it is don john i'll have to look for it. yeah don john, yeah mm-hmm. it's good <laughs> i'm gonna good. 15 minutes i'm gonna be bored i'm like i'm watching porn by it. <laughs> yeah, yeah literally but it's your life so you need to watch it because it is you <laughs> you're saying this about it i was like wow That's you funny. were in this movie you were this guy in this movie it's good it's good it's very but, it's yeah. very common it is, which is dangerous, which, which I'm going to have a whole episode about, like, later, is it, like, about Tantra and, like, my experiences with experiencing with, you know, going into, like, sexuality and Tantra. Like, I'm going to have a whole episode about that because I'm really passionate about that yep. subject as well. So, yeah. But mm-hmm. um, I just wanted to just kind of, like, chat about, you know, that segment. So, yeah, thanks for, like, giving us a little, you know, insight on your masturbation schedule. Thank you, O. <laughs> yeah. we, should, we should, like, we should, like, switch. We should, like, trade Pornhub or, like our view history see what type of porn you watch and what oh type of porn god, i watch one so day oh my god i'll be so embarrassed oh my god because i watch like cartoon porn <laughs> of course you do you asian <laughs> i'm so asian i watch like that hentai like asian i like i get weird like I you're like, like fucking marge marge simpson getting no by, like, not fucking... that stuff <laughs> No, like Goku, I've seen like that Goku. shit. So I watch like the Japanese she's getting, stuff. She's getting like, like wrecked by like Goku or something. <laughs> Shut up. Oh I know I've been like, it's so funny because you say that because it's like, yeah, it's like, would you want to like see what your partner like is into? Like, would you want to watch like what porn they watch? And like, what if you find out what they watch and it's like weird and you're like, oh, what the fuck you're into this shit? Fuck it's, it. Like, I mean, if it's going to keep them happy. 
Like, true, true. We also have to, you know, keep that in mind. Do your thing. You know. Yeah. Repre- re- what is it? Repre- repre- I can't even think of a name. Anyways, whatever. I'm moving on. So, cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for, you know, that insight on that. Um, okay. Well, Vanilla, oh, Vanilla. we are going to finish up the episode with the quote of the day, which I chose this quote for you. Um, and it is a quote. And I think that it'll be, you know, it's very, you know, you. Um, so this is a quote. It says, I will not let anyone walk through my mind with their dirty feet. And that is by Gandhi. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of you. Okay. It's because I thought of feet. I was like, Dr. O. He's a foot fetish guy, you know. <laughs> mm, can't walk on me, but I mean, like, what? I don't know why. I literally else. saw that and I was like, this is fun for for Orlando. I don't know why. It's just thought randomly. So yeah, that was your quote of the day based off of you, Orlando. Cool. But yeah. Um, so yeah, that this is, is so much fun. Show. Did you have fun, Oh? Did you have yeah, fun? Yeah, this, okay. this is fun. Yeah. Yay. This is good. I know. It was kind of a long episode, guys. So thank you for sticking in and um, listening to the whole thing. Um, so yeah, that was a little, that was just, you know, our recap on Legendary and also the ballroom culture. If you are interested in this culture and learning more about ballroom, definitely watch the documentary Paris is Burning. It is very, very good. It'll tell you very it is. factual. Or you could like look up like a bunch of other like, um, a bunch of like other pages on Instagram, like yes. Vogue House of New York has a lot of good content um Cunty Vogue has really good or like Vo- yeah Vo- um Ova Ova Cunt or something like that it's all they're all on Instagram you can just yeah. like follow on there and like they have a lot of good content and videos almost you daily you can just type in the hashtag like ball ballroom call, and then you'll like yeah. that's how I and found it like and you'll kind of see the idea for anybody that's listening um you'll see kind of what I'm talking about as far as like the different dynamics of ballroom culture and then what was on that show yeah it'll it'll show you guys like a true kind of like perspective on that but definitely watch the show legendary i thought it was very good because also if it gets streaming right like orlando all the things that orlando was saying but the more the more people that are aware of this culture and aware of legendary it'll maybe change the maybe who knows maybe it like hbo will start to kind of like cater it to strictly towards the ballroom culture because ballroom you know is a whole thing and maybe they will you know who knows maybe they'll have more people that we you know like like orlando was saying like true people from the from the culture on the show maybe they won't fucking bring back these whack-ass judges like what the fuck like why are they on the show um like really um i get where they're Ms. coming Braxton. at but come on. right like <laughs> So curious. I'm like, what's going on? So yeah, but anyways, that was the show. Um, I thank you guys so much for listening. As always, um, reach out to me, leave me. So if you could, please rate, comment, and um, subscribe to um, you know my podcast on all the like you know podcast stuff, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcast, um, what is Stitcher. Yeah, all the good stuff. Uh, I think you can only leave comments on Apple Podcasts, though. So, yeah, that would always help with sponsors and commercials and all that fun stuff. Help your girl out. You can donate on the link as well. Love donations are always accepted. Your bitch is out of work. So, what's up? Um, <laughs> I'm over here like, I'm like send me some money, too. <laughs> I need money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right fucking becky was like, like plug my cash up in there too <laughs> literally becky was like she's like shout your venmo out kim i was like Bitch. <laughs> so yeah no i mean this is something that i just started but i have very high hopes for this podcast so yeah thank you all so much for listening and thank you oh for joining it was great having you on thank you for having me boo i really loved yeah. it i really enjoyed it love you so yeah well maybe i love you, know, you more I will see you soon. I'm sure you'll be, you know, on this episode again. Um, and I'll see you this weekend because we're friends in real life. Sa- it's Saturday, right? Saturday. Yes, yes you're going to be over. Oh, gonna, I'm going to have like, I'm going to host like a movie night and like a drive-in movie night at my house. So my <laughs> start playing night. porn. <laughs> Literally, right? <laughs> we're going to watch porn together. We're going to have a bonding time and watch porn together. It'll be fun. Bondage. Bondage, yeah. <laughs> it's a night of bondage. Yes, that's when I'm going to peg you and watch. It's going to be great. I have a harness here somewhere. Maybe I'll bring yes, it. Yes, bust it out though. I can't. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna let everyone go. This episode's been long boots. Um, yeah. Thank you yeah. so much for joining, and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye, babe. Bye, Bye everybody.